There's my audio. Okay. Ooh, got more people joining. I'm just going to be muting everybody. Make sure you're on mute unless you want to talk. And then you're welcome to ask questions. Also, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I'll be watching the chat while Farhan does his presentation and collecting questions that people might have. And video on, please. We will have it in presenter mode. And Farhan's gonna be doing some screen share on here. Okay, I'm Nicole Donnelly from AI Smart Marketing, and we are having a guest, Farhan Chavla, <laughs> and yes, from, yeah, from Karachi, Pakistan, and he uh, is the director of marketing for Bosch Pharmaceuticals and deals with large amounts of data for large amounts of people and customers. And he's been playing with spreadsheets and analysis with ChatGPT. And uh, there was there were a lot of people that were interested in hearing more about how he's doing this data analysis. Um, it's a pretty new, pretty new way to use ChatGPT that we don't find a lot of people doing. And there's definitely some quirks to it and things to know. Um, so Farhan, I will let you take it from here. And again, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat and I'll be watching there and we can ask Farhan when he gets done doing demos of the first bits. So over to you. Thank you, Nicole. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's 6 a.m. over here. So it's morning for me. Good evening to every one of you. Okay, uh, basically my name is Farhan Chavra and I'm director of marketing for Bosch Pharmaceuticals. My, uh, sorry. Uh, let me just uh, share the screen. I thought so. Uh, can you guys see the screen? Because I'm really new at this. Okay, share. There we go. Okay, we are, okay I got it. We are basically a 6,000 employee company with 2480 people working in the field with 115 distributors and about 300 plus SQs and we operate in 13 countries. So we have a huge amount of data coming almost every day. One of the things which I uh, ran the analysis on was on the compensation and the increments which you put in a, on a field force, because I'm part of the marketing and everything. So I need to know how much we're spending on it and give it to my management with complete analysis. Usually we used to use, we get data through Oracle, Power BI. We also use .NET SQL, all the technologies to collect the data. And to present them, again, we have, I just run the analysis using Excel, prepare the graphs and show it to my management. This time I took the sheet and put it on, cleaned up. You know, one of the things which you have to do is clean up the data. It's the most important thing to do. And put it on ChatGPT and start getting the analysis from that. And the things which I covered in it was the sales, the destinations, because some of them have been promoted. We have six major divisions in the marketing growth, so which we've divided, so use those. The 10 years we have employee, which are working for 28 years. We have those who have been 28 days. Their salaries, because to see what's the impact of salary coming in. And their base salary division, because of the inflation, we are working on effort if we increase the base salary from 22,000 Pakistani rupees to 35,000 Pakistani rupees. All these numbers are just, because it's been going to be shared publicly. The numbers which I'm going to show you and every other data is not an actual, because I know some of my employees will be watching it later. I'm sorry about that. And the productivity and how much sales the uh, people are giving and how they are performing. So I took that and uh, let me just shift it to. I'm putting another another screen. So I took that data and put everything on ChatGPT. Now the data which I'm talking about is about 2480 rows and about 10 different columns. So it's a huge data. The prompt which I used is a is big one because one of the things which I learned going through all the classes with Nicole and Dan is that English is the best language you can use. I have no idea about programming. I don't know how to do Python. 
So what I did, I went in depth in what I'm asking for to get a better output. The best thing about ChatGPT4 right now is that they've started allowing 50 questions in three hours. So you can ask as many as you want, you can get a much, much better data output now. So the prompt which I used was, you are a human resource manager, defined this role, and a master data analyst of a pharmaceutical company. So the role is defined for ChatGPT, ChatGPT what they want to be. The Excel sheet given to you contains human data for the whole field force. The sheet contains employee ID, designation, the division they work in, the subdivision called teams, they're based town. They are based in Pakistan because I didn't define the country and output was coming out in dollars. So define that. Their joining date, which will help us determine their tenure till 30th June 2023. Their target based on value, their sales achievement and column achievement, every sales per month based on 11 months of sales. Because again, I don't want to run a 12 month analysis on it. It was for 11 months. Their sell of 2021 as labeled in the column, their increments they got in 2022, 2023, 2022 and 23 total salary and proposed increment for 23, 24. So now also can get the whole three uh, uh, progression how they are working and proposed salary and person increase in salary. As a data analyst make in-depth analysis of the data shows the every sell of destinations and ignore this uh, prefix senior. We have like, Sales promotion officer, senior sales promotion officer depends on how old they are. So don't want to do that. I want the data to be for sales promotion officers only and remove the senior prefix so I get the complete analysis on them. Mention that there's missions such as senior sales area manager to be treated as area manager only. Also on this mission separately show the highest selling increase, their averages, how they increase over the years. I'm getting a three analysis which division have, uh, has highest increase in salary and which has lowest, which division has highest salary expenses compared to their sales and which has lowest, who are the oldest working staff and know how the salary metric is a newly joined the same designation in the last three years, how many people are unable to achieve their target by achieving 85% of below are getting increment and how many are not. Also, what if increase basically everyone below 25,000 after 20 to 24, 25,000. This is the first one I done 25,000. The second one is in 35,000. What will the number of persons getting that base increment impact on salary percentage overall and in divisions? Run any of the analysis you deem appropriate beside there as a HR manager. Show all the data in tabular so I can get the data out in tables, graphical and download CSV formats. Leave, leave out no matrices. If I didn't point to anything to you and you think it can be done, do it. So it's a very uh, broad prompt which I've given it to it. So I can access all the data that it can run and all the analysis can do. So that's how it started. It picked up the file. The file is called the field for increment LLM. I just like to name all my sheets LLM, which I'm putting in uh, chat GPT. Easier for me to find them. And I also come to CSC. I had a problem uh, uploading the Excel sheets. Whenever I used to do that, there was one, uh, one of the sheets and tabs in it, which has uh, empty data. It was picking it up constantly giving me error. So I closed it out. <clears throat> Now, uh, the analysis how it started, it picked up the data, start analyzing it with serial number and prime ID. First of all, it defined itself what all the town means. And the best part is it start reading out itself. So it's easier for me not to define each and everything. It removed the senior prefix as, as I asked it to, convert the date strings to date. Now, the, again, the best part because the CSP file I haven't defined these are dates and these are that. I just told it this column is date and start working on itself and turning the non numeric values into data. Uh, I'll just go down further instead of uh, going through everything. When you start examining the every cell, what I've asked for, it starts working on that. Now, the problem which started first was I started getting data in like this format, which I'm unable to understand, but it let it work. And then I just told him you're showing data in code form like this and copied and pasted it and started working on it again. And I start getting all the data in the tabular format. Only this one was anomaly because this already in the data, there was an asterisk right in front of sales promotion officer. The start becomes as a separate field. Others for this one and this, uh, for my area sales manager, I start removing the senior prefix. So next time I'm going to try, it can only ask it to remove the prefix or not, but this is the only anomaly I can see over there. It came up with a maximum salary for all the designations. It went down to the average salary increase on what I'm doing with what. So it gave me a good analysis on that, that how it's working and later on to make a graph out of it. The every salary progression, like I told you, I put in all three years salary, so I start getting it, the ASS when I start 40,000 rupees, 
It's showing in dollars. I didn't define it at that time. Then went up to 48, then 54, then 59. So now I'm getting a complete analysis to show it to my management how the increase in salary is going. And it was easier for them to, so that they can easily understand that how we are increasing our expense on salaries. Zone manager for 50,000 to 71 to 85 to 103,000 rupees. And then the division with the highest, then also start working on the division with the highest salary average increase from 22, 23 was Lens, with an increase of 5,000 rupees. The lowest one uh, was Galaxy with 2,300 rupees. The division, the highest salary exposure as proportion of the sales 2024 is cardiology division, the ratio of about 0 0.4, about 4%. And this is about 9% in penciling division. Okay, after running this data, I took the whole thing and I ran the, again, okay, after I ran the analysis, I asked you to go further. Now I'm not using any of the prompts, just asking you to work further on it. And it started working again. Average tenure of employees of cardiology is this, Galaxy is this, healthcare is five years, lens is seven years, penciling 6.7, spectrum 6.2. Average sales performance of everyone is 103%. And then the number of employees in each designation start giving out that, that in, if I want to see how many sales promotion officers do I have, it starts showing out that about the out of 2480, sorry, uh, sorry. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask because I'm, not, I'm really new with this, uh, the Zoom presentation. Okay, sorry, here. Yeah. Okay, comparison number of employees by designation and tenure. So, okay, what I did after running this uh, analysis, I ran the same thing again two days back, two days afterwards. Same uh, prompt which I used earlier, but this time I start getting a bit of different result. And instead of giving me the giving the complete data, I use the same file, field form, given LLM, and everything. It started working, giving out me a bit of different result, and cleaning out data. And the output I got was a bit different. Again, started giving out me in, in uh, the coding format. So I asked it to change it. And then started working it out again. Okay. And that was a different file. Here. Yeah. So this time it's doing the basic, basic answer itself. It ran the destination wise analysis, the average salaries, salary increase, division analysis, tenure, target achievement, basic adjustment. It didn't give me all the details how it's been going through it. I just started working on it. And here the data is totally different. Right now, it started giving me the stats of the salary first in a tab table format. It's not as good looking as, as I got earlier in my uh, previous analysis, but this time it changed. And then Again, the data is output started in the code format. But I start having some errors, so I start apologizing in between and start uh, running the case again and again. So I stopped it and gave it your showing the data is, uh, like this, written in a human readable format to the graph. So I start changing it again. And then I start reading the data properly. And that's how I start getting it. The person increase salary on all the teams. This year, I used a bit of a different, uh, change the file names to see how it goes. So it started giving me the person increase in salary expenditure. And then designation as the oldest and newest staff in three years, how they are performing. Person increase in salary, uh, salary expense by division. And then stopped. In the earlier one, it went all the in details and in depth, but right now it just stopped in between. So I told him, to, okay, as a HR manager, what else can we run? Start working on it, the same thing again. And then it started, it went all quite in depth with the things and then started giving me the graph. One thing also asked, again, you provide the data in table form, it didn't give it to me. It started working on that. And all the data can start coming out in table form. I also asked for CSV files, which it didn't in the, in the which it did in the first prompt. But here it, st it start, stopped giving me CSV files. So I have to ask it again. But the, Things which I'm looking at is that the files it has given me as the complete details which I'm looking for. And then ask for one more thing. Uh, give me, sorry, ask for, give me complete data and download CSV format. Also in any of the analysis you can think. Now I'm just pushing it to do whatever it can do. 
and appropriate to be presented to the management board performance review. So it went down to performance quarterlies. Salary was a performance quarter, quarter has about what the, uh, the first quarter, second quarter, third Q1, Q4 people are doing. Division wise performance, employee churn, risk based on compensation. If you look at one of the things, identify employees whose compensation is below average for the performance level, this is something which we usually don't run. You start running it by itself. Like if you look at the whole uh, bell curve on the Q1, it's 622 employees, the, the lowest one and the highest 622. So we can see the overall the employees are equally divided in all four categories in the first Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Sally was the performance uh, analysis. It did that. That the in the lowest part of the bell, we have 40,000, the other part of the bell, we have 36,000. And the team alpha and prism and pinnacle are what their achievements are. The churn basis, their salaries, every salary, achievement percentages, and salary difference from average. Like uh, my business manager, employee code, I can uh, ask to put the names later. What the salary they are making, their achievement, and how they are working. And it started giving the observations. Now, this is again the in depth analysis which ChatGPT is producing, which usually we used to do it ourselves and think about it. It's given us much more ideas into thinking how the things are going. Like the highest uh, fourth quartile performance have a lower every salary than other quartiles. Although they are the highest performers, they're getting a lower salary. So this is something which we have to look into it. Now that analysis, yeah, we can run ourselves, but it's giving out everything to us in a good format and defining everything to us. It's easier to go through the things and not miss out on anything. And again, it's giving me the CSV format, which I can easily download and uh, present. Now I asked it to, because I was getting the employee data over here, I didn't know what the employees, I asked it to change it and also start putting in the names. Uh, which it did in the CSV format, and I got it over here. Then asked what analysis can you run beside what you have run earlier? Show results which will benefit from talking to the employees. Now, from the HR point of view, I want to see how to motivate the employees for the motivation and need data and stables and graphic and downloadable file form and do include employee names and downloadable file. So start working on achievement recognition, tenure recognition, sales per month progress, salary progression by tenure, potential talent identification, and start uh, is just doing its analysis over there. Now start from like Kashi Falin for Prism Group, SPO is doing having one of the highest sales. So let's start giving it that data. The same file because 2480 people is just showing me a couple of them and then rest again, I can download the CSV file. Tenure recognition, Rana at Farm is with us for 28 years. Sayed Javed is for 28 years. So if you want to give a long service award or something like that, I can easily work it out over here. Sales per month progression, Jankir Khan, is doing 112, then achievement percentage has missed it. It was in the file. And similar tables would exist for median bottom performance. I'll show you the file later on how it did. And sales progression by tenure for the newly employed joint year, uh, for employees for about 0.6, uh, month of point, uh, sorry, 0.6 years of joining. They have this salary, my employee 6.64 has this much salary in average. Potential talent identification, Jangir Khan is doing one of the best. And so it starts also giving me out that which employees are doing the best so I can work with them and see how they can they can go further. This is the visualization, which I did. Let me just show you the files. It downloaded the file and I'll just bring it up in the next screen in a while. Nothing they like the individual manager running the division separately analysis. Can you give them to improve productivity? Like I told you, I have six divisions. So I split all of them. Uh, like, uh, Pinnacle versus prism, how it goes. So now with the perspective of an individual manager, it starts running it separately. Employee performance distribution, tenure versus performance, salary versus performance, potential leaders, and areas of improvement. Again, it starts doing the performance of each and every, is, well, it start, took its prism as an example, rest in the CSV file, that how uh, the Siafat is doing, how Muhammad Ali is doing, Atar Rahman is doing. The median performance was right in the middle and the bottom performance. Now I've got a whole file of which employees I have to work on, which employees I have to improve and which employees are doing the best. And then it went down to the tenure versus performance, like a, a newly joined SPO, a manager like less than a year is doing 115% while one in above one year is doing 91%. So again, we can work it out that what the training needs are, how we can work on them. Salary versus performance, the base salary was 24,000, 25,000 rupees, which we're giving to them. And they are doing 177%, 140%. 
So do we need to increase the salary? How much we should do that we can work upon? For potential leaders, for the product specialist, this, uh, it picked itself because we have a distinction between the area manager and sales manager product specialist. So we can work on them like 277% increase and then 44, how to take them further. And also define, these are the top performing individuals who can be groomed for leadership roles giving more responsibilities. So it's uh, giving you the solution, giving you the suggestions now, all so by these itself. these are the five reports. Um, the uh, sorry, uh, you cut off. That was someone's background noise, which just muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And again, for the division prism, it will start running area of improvement that for the area managers and who, who we have to work upon, like 80%, 85% achievers to take them further. Now this table provide managers for the prison division sites, employees who might need further support, training, mentoring. It's again doing by itself. The whole prom never told him to suggest all this to him. It's doing by itself. So again, I may be working with the data. I may be knowing my stuff. Sometimes I need some insights. I need some pushing to go further. It's doing that. And I can pursue general seminar analysis for all of the division, compile them down the form. Okay, that will be good. I now got the CSV file over here. Now as to break the file with top 200, top 200 bottom with the same parameters. Again, uh, my tapping stopped really good. So I start making mistakes and it just picks up things by itself and it threw me the data. One of the things which I noticed earlier is how to train the employees and also to increase the salary of some of the people. It even told me that. If I can just find it, uh, give me a moment. See, it's us telling me to for tailored training and guidance for the top uh, performers and also ran a salary analysis for top, the top performers told me to do that. So overall, uh, the data which I, okay, the, let me show you the output which I got in the CSV file. I have to stop sharing the screen, I'll reconnect it. Okay, and after that, will you please show everybody um, how to turn on the mode that you're using um, and then how to select oh. it and how to upload a file? Yeah, that also, that will be easier. Okay, okay this you. is the analysis which I'm getting because it's on CSV format. I'm using Apple, so it's going to numbers as you can open an Excel too and run your analysis on it. Sorry, this one is, yeah, top and uh, bottom five, uh, 200 ones. I'll open it in Excel so it will be easier to understand. Can you guys see, uh, Nicole, can you see the sheet? Not yet. No, okay, let me just share the screen again. I'm able to find it. There we go. Okay, now can you see it? Okay, this is the uh, Excel sheet which I got from it. Top 200, top bottom 500. I've, I can run the further analysis, give it to him, uh, upload it to file to it and make it run a further analysis too. And now we'll go to how to, how, how I did all that, how I ran the sheets. Sorry. Uh, so I went to new chat. I'm using chat GPT-4. I have the code interpreter start, uh, already selected over here. And can you show them this is, how to turn on the code? Sorry. Okay, sorry, let me just uh, share the screen again. Yeah. Because not everybody mm. has it enabled. Okay. Okay, can you go down to this? Uh, can you see this? Actually, can you see the screen? Yes. I started passing you again and again, but I'm not really proficient with that. So you go to your name on the left-hand side, there's a whole column with all the queries here from, and there's your uh, login over here, or maybe your icon. Just click on the, these three dots and go to settings and beta. And you go down to the beta features and there you can see the code interpreter. You have custom instruction found. I can tell it what I am, so it works accordingly. I'll talk about it later. The plugins and also the code interpreter. So once it's on, you can upload your files to it. It's available in ChatGPT in Chat GPT 4 with a paid version. And let me just uh, copy the complete file. Or oh, let's do one more thing. Uh, new chat, got this. I'll upload the data which I got from Netflix. It will be much more fun to look at. 
this is the Netflix data, all the countries which they produced since 2021 till, till last week of all the top shows in Netflix and all the top uh, movies in Netflix and all the countries they operate in. It's the file is uploaded all weeks. It's Excel, uh, Excel format. I haven't formed with CSV, haven't worked on anything, anything. So just a prompt, you are a data analysis. For a TV production company, defining the role. The data is about top TV shows and movies on Netflix. From all the countries they operate in, then on the analytics, you can to be presented to management and marketing. Show the data in table and graphical form. Also generate a downloadable USB file. Okay, so very simple prompt which I've used. See how it proceeds. So this is a uh, working and swing at the back. I did the whole thing earlier, so I'll show you if it doesn't work at this time, I'll just then show it to you later the how it worked. And I think it's important to note that what Farhan just said, it worked earlier and it didn't work the same way now. Just like when he did the spreadsheet analysis, the salary analysis in comparison, it worked differently both times he tried it. And we find the same that um, chat GPT is inconsistent and it's really important to know how to talk to it to get the information you want. And this is a good demonstration of, you know, I didn't get what I wanted the first time, so let's try it again. Yeah, you have 50 questions, so you can use it again and again and make it work in three hours. And after three hours, you can ask another 50 questions. If you look at one of the things that uh, the country code with Netflix uses are the ISO 2 codes. Like for Pakistan, they're using PK, for Australia, it's AU. And Netflix defining itself about the country, I don't have to tell it that it's the ISO 2 codes. It's doing it by its judging is doing itself. So uh, for a lot of things doing by, it already has the data with it. It's just utilizing that uh, its own data is trained on and working analysis based on that. So now to start working on it, running the overall analysis, country specific analysis, time and it's using top five countries and top five shows and graphic visualization. Okay, and there are, if you look at this, there are 5,545 unique shows and movies in the data set. And how much time it took about like 15, 20 seconds to start working on it. Uh, films, 101 films in it, there are 101 TV shows in it. Now here it made a mistake because there are total entries. I haven't defined what the movies and TV shows are. Even Netflix doesn't do uh, doesn't it. So it's showing the total of both the things. If you look at the country wise analysis, New Zealand has the highest 922 unique shows and movies. Canada has 905, Trinidad, Tobago, 889 unique shows. I mean, these are those which are only present in New Zealand, nowhere else. Canada has 905 TV shows, which I can't see them in Pakistan. They are only for Canada. Trinidad, Tobago has 889. So if you guys are using the uh, VPN servers, you guys know which Netflix to use. I mean, we do that in Pakistan to watch Australia. Australia has 881, Reunion has 870. And if you look at the top five movie, top five TV shows, which are appeared uh, on all the countries, Stranger Things have been watched like 3,258 times. So these are the most popular TV shows over there. Manifest has 2,900 uh, times have been shown among all the data set. The Good Doctor for 2,000, Money Heist, again, a popular show, 1,700 times. And You, which just came out like six, uh, six months ago, 1,600 times. If you look at the time analysis in the week of Port 721 unique shows. There were 257 unique shows. At the time, the newer unique, uh, TV shows were being sh were really popular. They're among the top 10. If you look at 2021 in the 1821, the unique shows were 245. So once I downloaded data as a TV producer, I can see 
how the, uh, the unique shows are working over there. And the passion, the governor now has stayed for lock type 10 in the top for 102 weeks, like one of the best performing uh, shows in Netflix then. And most of think it's money heist. And if you start working, it's still giving the category. Well, this category is not defined, so the data is not correct. The movies and uh, the TVs are showing uh, almost the same data because I didn't define what the movies and what the TV. So if the data integrity and the data quality is also really good. If you put in the correct and the right data, you will get the correct and right output. Else there are gonna be mistakes like this one. If I would have defined these are the movies and these are the TV shows, would have given me the correct data over here. If you look at the top five, plenty the most, most unique TV shows, here they are New Zealand, as I showed, it showed earlier, New Zealand, Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, Australia, and Reun Reunion in Africa. Top five movies in frequency across all the countries is Stranger Things uh, manifest. Again, what it showed up, say, uh, uh, up in, the, in the text form, it showed the graphical form, which you can easily download and put it on your screens or put it on your presentation. Distribution of shows and movies by categories, the screen evenly split framed. Again, the data is not correct over here, so the output is also not correct. The top five movies are again talked about, and you can download data in CSV format. Uh, what are the analysis? Now, when I ran this uh, uh, like uh, day back, now you can do January analysis. So you have to push it a bit further. If you don't know what you're asking for, just ask it to do whatever it wants to do and start giving you something new. And okay, and we're starting the data now. Now these are all the parameters it picked up itself and it's doing it. Now I have no idea how the movie industry works, how the production and TV industry works, but here it's giving me everything I want you to know as I'm a TV producer. It's taking a bit of a time because, and this is the data is about the past. It's a weekly data of all the top 10 movies and TV shows since 21. And I think this is where chat GPT really shines is it's finding patterns and similarities and presenting you with information based on data that you already fed it because GPT doesn't yeah. work well as a search engine itself, but based on information that you feed it, it can give you insights that you wouldn't have gotten yourself or faster than you would get them yourself. You know, it just stop. Okay. It has stopped giving me data. It has run the analysis, but it's not giving us any output. Show the output. Sometimes like talking to your 10 year old, telling them what to do. If they come in like, Baba, we have done this, but what you have done can't be show that. So that's how it starts working. Now it's running it all over, everything all over again. And as uh, Nicole said earlier, it's not consistent this time. It's, I have to ask it. What I did earlier, it should be everything just on the uh, first try. I'll show you two right after done with this analysis. I'll, I'll show that that screen too. I like looking at this part. I mean, I'm not a program and everything, but it's really fun to look at. Okay, now start getting it. <clears throat> now what the last which is run is that every month, now you can see in July, mostly they come with the most unique shows and movies and the trend starts to go down further in, let me just move this. Uh, in September, April, August, December, okay. It's a defined everything that how the new movies come, when, when did they come out? July is mostly holidays and all, so they have it over there. And November, December, they have one of the lowest coming in. 
staying power analysis tells you things again as it told it told earlier that how many times it has started it, it has been there if i take it to the earlier prompt which i've run again this is the same uh, basic analysis which asked it to run and start do the same uh uh and uh same analysis which it did earlier but the output which i start getting is trends over time which you which it showed me earlier it's a very scattered graph, and I have asked it to break it down. The breaking down is Stranger Things manifest again the same movie is talking about, but the Witcher was not there earlier in the first one. Witcher is now oh, sorry, Witcher wasn't in the analysis, which I did in front of you, but it's showing the Shure's property appears to have peaks and valleys, uh, suggesting periods of heightened interest. Witcher came out like six months back. They came up with season one. Now season two is out, so you can see the peaks and valleys showing over here. In country specific uh, preferences, Argentina has Cafe Con Arama de Mayo at the 18 times the top three, Queen of Pro 17 times, Australia has Outer Banks, it's an Australian show, Mate and Ozark. Austria has Rookie Squid Games, Bahamas has Alice Finest, Dynasty, again, some of these shows are depending on the region. Bahrain has Squid Games, Night Agent, Amelie in Paris as the top shows. Staying Power, as they showed earlier, it just gives us one line that passion D governance was the highest showing over there. Right now, it's giving the competitors of top 10 passion D governance, Pablo Escobar, Chiquitas, Money Heist, Crash Landing is all coming out. In category distribution, again, because the data was uh, not correct, uh, it, it, go, it just to, uh, told us about the top 10, how it's defined. So data is totally evenly distributed. Because if I put in the correct data, what I've shown, but one thing to notice is uh, then Russia, it brought the graph down as they are, I don't know whether they're shooting about the business over there or their offerings, the Russian graph is way down as compared to others. Everything, all of the countries are totally consistent. And I won't go into that because of the data was not correct. So I won't talk about that. And now as how Pakistan market compared to that of the United States, and then start running on the to, uh, top shows, trends over time. In Pakistan, we have the most populous money high, Stranger Things, we cancel Good Doctor and the Indian movies. In US, it started with Coco Melon and then Stranger Things. So basically the data, whatever you feed in, whatever analysis you're looking at, you can get it out, out easily. And it will give you the complete analysis, what you're looking for, what you're asking for it. It's given now, it's even giving me how, how many months money has been in the top in Pakistan and we cancel in this. Again, I don't know how to make use of this data being not in the field, but I know my friends who are into TV production and movie production, they can easily use that. So Nicole, I think I'll uh, stop it over here. And if there are any questions, they can always ask. Yeah, we do have a question from Juan. And I was thinking about how you could use this data if it's current, for if you use the Netflix data, because we do a lot of things where we try to do news jacking. And if you want to create social posts, based on this kind of data, you would know which shows to, to follow, make boards about, or memes, or, you know, there's so much you could do with this kind of information um, from a consumer marketing perspective, if you, like, if you can do it in a little bit more fun way, but also to see what people are interested in, you can put the context of your marketing and the things that they have been watching. Um, I worked with a bridal shop and uh, we would follow some of the shows where people are getting married and, you know, feature the dresses that they're getting married with. And um, I feel like we could probably use this, use this tool to get even more granular with the data um, from that kind of B2B perspective. And even, I mean, B2C perspective, but probably some B2B too. Uh, Juan has a question. He was wondering... Uh, do you use GPT to help you create the prompts and how do you create data files that include the correct metrics to derive these types of insights, particularly around sales? One of the uh, thing is with, uh, for the bigger prompt, which I use for my computer analysis, I just uh, typed it out. Again, I, I don't know, I, you know, my typing is a bit slow. What I do, I just go to Word, start dictate and start talking to it, whatever is in my mind. And this makes types out the whole thing. I just copy it and paste it into the GPT. It's easier for me to do that. And uh, I do use it for writing prompts, but I find that they're not very uh, useful because it doesn't know what I'm asking for. 
So once the initial prompt is done, I ask it to go further. Now it knows what's looking at, what my analysis is, and starts working on top of that, start giving out much more and more data. The source for the data basically is we collect uh, data from our distributors, we collect the sales data from them. We have like 15 distributors, so I get data from there every day. And the other is given by my other departments like marketing, sales, and finance. And we I have a guy who compiled everything into Excel sheet, which I just uploaded over here and run the analysis. What I did, I had the sheet with like eight different tabs. I what I uh, took all the eight tabs, put them into one tab. So it was easier for GPT to uh, run the comparison. Now the best thing which is coming up now, which I tried yesterday, now it can take up multiple files and start doing the analysis on those two. So you don't have to worry about going for eight tabs and don't, if, even if you have eight files, it will compare all of them. So it's running, it's getting much uh, better in doing the data analysis. Any other question? I can't, Nicole, you are on mute. Don, it seems like you might have some thoughts or ideas how you could use this in your business. Um, I'd love to hear what you're thinking over there. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Um, and thank you so much, Fahan. I um, I'm not great with spreadsheets, so um, so I have my um, uh, ops manager with me who is a spreadsheet lover. She was pretty excited um, about even just uh, sitting in and, and hearing the conversation. Um, I guess we're uh, to the main insight was you saying. Um, you know, it's really good with data when you know, when you plug in your own data and then get it to do analysis. So we're trying to think of all the kind of um, data points that we've got. So we were thinking, oh, it'd be great. We could go back over the last few years and look at the customers who have referred work to us. We're a professional services business and, and do some analysis on, you know, the number of individuals within those companies that are using us or um, perhaps looking at some data um, that we've got. We can pull it out of our CRM quite easily around the number of hours we bill per assessment and compare it across consultants so that, you know, at a, at a hit of a button, we could perhaps produce a monthly or a quarterly report for them. Um, so I'm, I'm, ju I'm just sitting absorbing and trying to figure out <laughs> how, how can we use this? So I found it really interesting. Um, you know, the, the coding and stuff is, is well beyond me, but I like that, you know, with um, practice, you get better at writing these prompts um and and asking it the right questions and seeing where it takes you and just playing with it yeah uh, Don, one of the classes I, I took with nicole and dan of this hack was the thing which uh the best thing which i learned is the best programming language with chat gpt is english yeah just ask whatever you want to do and it yeah. will produce it yeah you don't have to be yeah. in programming you don't have to do no data analytics just whatever you your mind, ask it. Yeah. I mean, if you look yeah. at my prompt, I just put everything garbled all together and I told it to do Yeah, well, I, I like you. I'd learned that from Nicole as well. So um, I loved that. It looked very much like my prompts, I have to say. <laughs> Nicole, I blame you for that. But I was like, la, 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 <laughs> la. Yeah. It's funny. It's really I've interesting. I've cut. I've cut back on the volume of information I put into one prompt because I found chat GPT goes sideways a bit, um, yeah. a bit faster with the bigger prompts. And so I, I did something that I wanted to share with you because it's kind of the other way it's creating a spreadsheet in chat GPT. And this is so basic. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is really basic. I yeah. have been doing this 90 day journal challenge. I'd been keeping my journal in Apple Notes. And so I wrote day one and put the date and put my little entry. Well, now it's kind of a mess and I'm more than halfway through the challenge. And so I, um, I wanted to put it in a spreadsheet format and then have it populate all the other dates till the end of the challenge so I could see where I was. And I copied and pasted all my journal entries into chat gpt and i'll share this with you yeah cool um so i started with a small prompt and then they it got bigger and i asked it to do two columns and have these 90 days and then leave a column and blank for a journal entry 
and it started with 90 and then it stopped at 81 and then did three, two, one and oh. stuff. Dates. <laughs> huh. So Hang on, I, but the dates are the dates are correct. The dates are correct. I yeah. told you the start date and the dates are correct. And then I actually had the start date wrong. And so I had to redo it because my yeah. prompts were um, or my journal entries were all in different orders. Yeah. Um, and so then I said, please try again and fill out all 90 lines. And <laughs> it, it didn't. Please try again and fill out 90 lines of column one and two. And then it did left off the third. Um, but it did columns one and two. Brilliant. So I was it's like, okay. Cheating. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's like a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> so I took that and put it in a spreadsheet and then I took my entries. Well, I actually asked it because that, that doesn't always work to paste directly into Excel in the right format. And you need to do it CSV. Like Farhan said, you need to import CSV. It doesn't do well with Excel or Google Sheets, that format. So CSV tends to work better. So it's telling me what to do. And I said, that doesn't work. Please put in exportable format. CSV works too. So then it puts it in CSV, but it stopped. It didn't give uh -huh. me lines. So I said, try again. It didn't do it. Um, and then it finally did. So I put that in the table. And then I had all my journal entries and they're in random order as some are in order, but these little entries with day and date. And so then I asked it to put these in order. And then I asked it to put it in a sheet. So it did, I had what I did right today, what I could have done differently. And then I exported that and put it, and it didn't do all of them either. So I had to ask it again. Um, and I, I actually think I've manually entered the last ones, um, but it did a number of them. And then I put it in the spreadsheet and I had it that way. So, you know, there, are, I've, this was, this one took longer than it should have for how simple it was. Um, I also did a budget in here for a marketing plan trying to find and where that was. Nicole, do you reckon if you had written a longer prompt at the beginning, uh, you know, like specifying, I want you to do all 90 days, don't miss any, like a bit more detail, would you, do you think you might have been able to get that outcome more quickly or not? You don't, who knows? I don't know. It could yeah. be the day of the week. Because I said create a table with column one being day, create days one to 90 and have them in descending order. Column two label is day and date, begin day one, Friday, June 23rd. Column three is the journal entry. And yeah, but because you've said one to nine, one to 90, and you haven't said inclusive, maybe that's why it thought, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I like, I don't know how it thinks, but I'm read. I, if you think yeah. of it, it's reading the language and you've gone, well, one to 90, but you haven't spe specified that it needs to include all 90 days. Maybe it's gone, oh, well, she doesn't want to see all 90 days. She just wants to see a few at either end. Yeah, well, on here I Not said, please try again and fill out all 90 yeah. lines, and it didn't. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it does have a problem with giving out the table. It's a miss out, start missing out things. Just ask and give out the whole output in CSV format. Yeah. It'll give you a downloadable uh, file. Yeah, That's okay. better as compared to reading it over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that I did was a budget. And in here, I said, create a 12 month budget in table format with a dollar amount of 16,000 a month. The items we need to spend on are Google ads and management, SEO, new website, Facebook ads and management, creating SOPs for these particular items. So then it does my first 12 month budget. And I just wanted to see what it would do in this case and how much it would allocate to each thing. Um, it allocated, it didn't allocate the money properly and it didn't give me the right total. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I just wanted to see what it would do with less instruction here. And then it tells me what it did. So then, um, oh, I don't know why it doesn't have my revised prompt in here but I revised it with some items. 
now oh no still didn't work okay looks good okay then i added i told it what to budget and it does that and then i had to change it again because like okay well this part needed to be for three months these are one time onlys and you know then the budget so it worked it out to be an average of around 16 a month and it reduced it after some of the work got done but this budget instead of taking me like three hours to manually do everything and research everything I was able to have a conversation and change the numbers in here and it took me 30 minutes instead to put together a budget and I and then I had it put it in an exportable file with all the numbers in it and I, I hate doing budgets and spreadsheets because I am not a spreadsheet budget numbers person either, Don. And this was so time saving for me. Um, so I started using it whenever I am faced with a task that I think is just tedious and I don't want to do it. Like, how can AI help me with this? Yeah, yeah. I think the um, key learning from those two examples from me and and Fahan, probably your example too is the real importance for um, us to creatively have a go at it and ask the question and just give it a shot, but don't assume that what you get back is going to be correct and be patient as the technology improves and as your ability to instruct the technology improves to just keep working at it. Yeah, and I'd say yeah. with Farhan stuff too, I'm sure he's going to double check if it says these are your top performers before yeah. they get a bonus or raise or anything. He's probably going to double check that math to make sure that GPT did it right. Yeah, actually, we and do I was that wondering how I could... right again manually. Yeah, I was thinking Farhan, how can manually I manually again to go through everything? Get, yeah, sorry, your, sorry, uh, sorry. get your top performer, you know, that guy who was at 177% productivity hmm. and he was on such a low wage. I'm like, Man, I'd be giving him a pay rise instantly. Otherwise, I'll be stealing him from you. <laughs> Actually, our basic rate start basic salary in Pakistan is hundred dollars. Yeah, we start yeah, from that, I... and then it goes further on. But the yeah, thing is, more uh, than that if... per hour. Yeah. yeah. One thing you didn't <laughs> check is, uh, I would love to do that. Okay. <laughs> one thing you didn't check is it didn't compare the performance with the sales. The SPO, which is talking about with one hundred seventy-seven per percent performance was making a sale for like $3,000 only. Compared yeah. to the SPO who is giving me a 90% performance doing a $30,000 sale. Yeah, very good point. So that's not one parameter you have to put into it. It can also compare to sales as compared to performance, which I didn't. Mm. So you can get a much better picture than that. Mm. Yeah, really good. No, fascinating. I, I, I love, um, Nicole, I, I love this and Fahan, your example, it, just to really see the practical application of it, it, it just yeah. opens my eyes and my mind to what's possible um, and pulls me out of the kind of just continuing to churn doing the same way. Um, it's, it's the magic, really, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for participating. Um, if anybody wants more information, I mean, we're going to be the next one of these Zooms is going to be about ecom and AI for ecom. So if you know anybody who's interested, feel free to share the link with them. Um, we've got a bunch of the My EO ecom people that are going to be on this next one. Um, and Tune in if you're at all interested to see what's going on. There's some really, really cool things happening with predictive images and uh, with the predictive data and what it can do for conversion on websites and with products. It is it is game changing for product companies. It is also expensive right now, but I've got, um, I, I have access to some case studies um, from the company that sells this product to big companies like Mars, uh, and I have their permission to share it with you. Don, you have a question? Yeah, just, um, sorry, I might, no. Yeah, just wondering, we've got an e-commerce um, industry-specific forum in Sydney, but they're not necessarily all on AI chat. Can I forward it directly to the uh, moderator of that forum, even if they're not on the AI group? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. It's okay. gonna be an open one that we'll record for everybody. Um, yeah. So 
please do invite them. Yeah. Um, I want to have as many questions as possible if people want to send them beforehand too. Um, I what it's doing in every industry is huge, and some of the things it's doing in ecom is absolutely game changing because mm -hmm. when you get predictive analytics on your images and you know that something is going to convert better than something else, people are using it for product development too now mm -hmm. and for packaging. Um, it's been really accurate and there's a lot of big companies that are starting to use it now. Um, and I want to think is chat GPT for more for my um, year nine's commerce homework than I have in my own business. And uh, and he got ninety eight percent with his last assignment, <laughs> and we're like, yay for ChatGPT because they said he's they're welcome, you know, he's welcome to use it. We're like, brilliant. So yeah, I to I think e commerce is it's extraordinary what's going on in that space. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, I look forward to that one. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments, last minute? Nope. Okay, we can go a couple minutes early and I'll send a link out. So feel free to share it. Farhan has agreed to make this public information. Um, so we'll post it to uh, YouTube and we'll send it. We could share it in the WhatsApp groups and you could share it with um, you could share it with the ecom group too because they might find it interesting. Uh, and that'll go out in a couple of days. Oh, there's a question. Nicole, have you reviewed the different AI chatbot builders like writesonic.com? Which is the best in your opinion? This is not a two minute question. Um, the It depends what you want the chatbot for. If you want the chatbot to answer your customer's questions, that's one thing. Um, Juan, are you talking about for customers or internal customer support? Um, I would look at something like caffeinated CX that plugs into an existing customer support platform. Um, the standalone chatbots, there are some vulnerabilities there. I think we should probably do a full session on chatbots. We're working on building our own in a Microsoft Azure on our own data and so that it can be more secure. And one of the things that Azure has in their cognitive AI is you can take everything. We could take this Zoom recording and turn it into an FAQ. So you can upload so much information, so many documents about your company and turn them all into FAQs. Um, oh, Farhan has said, thank you for coming. And he posted his LinkedIn um his linkedin link so and email address if anybody has any questions afterwards so please go ahead and connect on linkedin um yeah so there are multiple aspects to the whole chatbot discussion um yeah i think that'll be worth once we get our azure chatbot built we'll definitely demo it for you and talk about the experience we just started on it this weekend Oh yeah, NLP on the same, yeah. And with the pricing models, the platforms get unsustainable pretty fast. Well, Juan, if you are already on um, some sort of customer service platform like Zendesk, or I think it works with Zoho CRM and Salesforce, check out Caffeinated CX because they'll work with those platforms and it's the least expensive one that's out there right now. So, and there's a YouTube video about it on my channel, uh, my personal one at Nicole Donnelly, um, where I had a conversation with the founder of Caffeinated CX. So you could watch that and learn a little bit more. The, the other ones do end up getting really expensive. So I, I will, we'll have a session on that in the near future. All right, Farhan, have a great day. And uh, yeah. Thank you everyone for giving me the time for and Nicole for the opportunity for this. Sorry, I have to leave because my daughter is already ready and I have to drop her to school. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, bye. Thanks. Thank you, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye everybody, bye Don. Thanks Nicole, it was great. Good, my pleasure, bye.